I've just finished two weeks of presentations at the Animal Training Symposium in Perth and uh, a couple of weeks ago presented a full day on aggression and reactivity. Now, I've got uh, my, one of my really good friends, Michael, is a musician and we've known each other for 30 years. Michael has been a musician for as long as I can remember. Uh, we were sitting one night um, fairly recently and listening to some music and he is um, talking about he hears music through a musician's ear whereas I hear it through a consumer's ear because my level of knowledge isn't the same as his. So he listens to the production, to the acoustics, to the harmonies, to the vocals and a whole bunch of different things um, which I had not tuned my ear to and have not tuned my ear to. So what I do is I view behaviour through a positive reinforcement, an R plus lens, okay, through positive reinforcement. When I'm looking at behaviour through, or when one looks at behaviour through an R plus lens, what we're looking for constantly is opportunities to reinforce the behaviours that we like. So we're looking to set the dog up for success and then looking at the, those opportunities to reinforce that behaviour. You then tend to notice more of the behaviour that you like, and when you notice it, you can then reinforce it more. Now, if you look at behaviour through a different lens, so through reinforcing behaviours that you like, but also correcting behaviours that you don't like, you're then not concentrating so much because your attention is split. Okay. So during the aggression and reactivity seminar, uh, we get a lot of uh, what ifs and yeah buts. And what I kept saying to people during it was, if you concentrate on looking for opportunities to reinforce your dog's good behaviour, the what ifs and yeah buts actually just disappear. All right. Now, uh, a couple of years ago, I saw Ken Ramirez presenting at a seminar in uh, England. So if you don't know who Ken Ramirez is, go and Google him. He's one of the best animal trainers in the world. And Ken had presented a two-hour lecture on teaching his animal how to say no. So he'd done this study. It was in its infancy at the time. And seven, if I can rem remember correctly, it was seven individuals from five different species. And he had taught them to say no. Now, one of the things uh, that came up from the... Uh, audience was what why does an animal just say no during training all the time and after the second or third time this question had been asked or questions along those the similar theme had been asked he said don't worry about it okay we're kind of concentrating on the wrong things so if you concentrate on what he is teaching the need for the animal to say no actually just disappears so if you Going back to what I was saying a minute ago, if you're looking at behaviour through a positive reinforcement lens, the other stuff will just disappear. All right. Um, questions or comments, stick them in the field below. Um, thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.